Hey everyone, Virgil of the Cut here, and we're here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I'm celebrating my birthday with my family. So for me, birthdays have always been an opportunity for reflection on the past year and thinking about how I want to live the next year of my life. Now, this year felt particularly special because it was my 20... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Go ahead. I said this year felt particularly special because it was my 20... Yo, what is that distraction over there? I'm 29. It's cool. Although based on how my friends helped me ring in year 29, I can tell my body doesn't bounce back the way it used to, but that's okay. Because as I look towards next year before turning the big 3-0, I've been thinking about how I can really start using this upcoming year as a new start for building healthy habits, setting new goals, and accomplishing some things off my bucket list, which happens to fall perfectly with this book that I'm currently reading. The past few weeks, I've been reading a book called How to Change by Katie Milkman, which explores the science of habit building and how to start doing the things you wanna do in the midst of overcoming procrastination, feelings of being overwhelmed, and just trying to juggle all the different priorities in our lives. Which I mean, that's what this channel is all about because realistically, I'm not the best at sticking to my improvement plans or building in strong habits all the time, and chances are you might not be either. Now, there are a ton of different topics that this book actually touches on, so I strongly recommend you check out Katie Milkman's book. I'm not sponsored or anything, but I left a link in the description if you want to check the book out. One of the things I really like about Katie Milkman's book is she recognizes that change is hard, but also that there's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all magic bullet solution for everyone in terms of strategies for habit change and self-improvement. So some of the things I talk about in this channel that work for me may not work for you and vice versa. But I do want to give you a small taste of what you can expect to find in this book, which is pretty timely because the first chapter of this book talks about the power of fresh starts. We've all experienced the feeling of a fresh start. So if you think about school, for example, there's this feeling once the semester starts where you're like, oh snap, I know I bombed last semester, but now I get a fresh new start. The GPA in terms of this semester in term is totally reset. And when we talk about fresh starts, I'm referring to moments like this, where you feel like you've gotten a blank slate, a do-over, or like a second chance. These can often be literal calendar dates. So New Year's resolutions are all about this idea of fresh starts. New year, new me. And Katie mentions that 40% of Americans every single year resolve to make life improvements on January 1st. And so it can be something like New Year's. It can also be something like birthdays, like the one I just celebrated. Of course, fresh starts don't have to be tied to a holiday or a special event in the year. They can also just be regular dates. Maybe it's the first of the month, the first of the week. Fresh starts can also be tied to significant life milestones or other events. So maybe you started a new job or you're experiencing a shift in your job. So if you're like me, one shift that I'm expecting to come up maybe a little bit later in the fall is the shift from all remote work to slowly coming back into the office, right? Uh, maybe you've had a significant relationship change or some other impactful event in your life. All of these different circumstances, these milestones can create this space where you can actually utilize a fresh start to help you build new habits. In short, this feeling that you have a fresh start can make it easier to distance yourself from old habits or old mistakes. You might think, oh, the old me or the 2020 version of me didn't go to the gym, but the new and improved 2021 version of me does. So one of the highlights that this chapter pushed me to think about was it's not necessarily about just what habit you're trying to build or even how you try to build that habit. It can also be about when you choose to change a behavior or when you choose to build in a new habit in terms of self-improvement. Going back to the semester at school analogy, I definitely feel a lot more motivated to switch up my study habits or look for ways to improve my performance at the beginning of a semester when it feels like I have a fresh start, as opposed to the middle of a semester when I'm already trying to figure out if I can still pass a class. So how can we become more intentional about these fresh start moments and how can we plug into that fresh start energy instead of just waiting for the next birthday or the next holiday or waiting for the next semester. Because as we mentioned, one way to think about intentionally identifying or creating these fresh start moments, plugging into that fresh start effect, is when there is a significant change in our lives. So Katie Milkman says that we tend to think about our lives in episodes. So for me, those episodes might include shifts from student to teacher to entrepreneur to working in higher ed. 
for some of my friends who have gone off to different states or even different countries after college or after high school, their episodes might be tied to whether they consider themselves a US resident, a European resident, a Japanese resident, and so on. But of course, not everyone has the luxury of just moving every time they want to start a new habit or just quitting their job and finding new employment just for the sake of creating this fresh start effect for positive behavior change, right? But we can harness this power in more sustainable and smaller ways. Maybe you decide to work in a different location. Maybe it's a coffee shop if you have a big project for work or school coming up. Or maybe you decide to get a gym membership for a change of environment. I have a lot of friends, um, myself included, who feel a lot more motivated when they're in an actual gym space where there are weights and other people working out as opposed to rolling up the yoga mat beside my bed. Um, I end up falling asleep every time I try to do that. So that doesn't work for me either. Not gonna lie, I remember hearing as we were going into quarantine in 2020, this idea of creating different spaces where you sleep and eat and exercise and spend your leisure time. And I'm sitting here laughing because I'm like, you have different rooms where you can do those different things right now? Because I tended to do all four of those things in my room because that's where I spent 99% of my time the last year. But I am looking to utilize a little bit more of a separation of each of these areas now that the US at least is starting to open up a little bit. Of course, Katie does note that although fresh starts can be used as a force for good, it can also be used as a force for evil. <laughs> no, but it's important to know that a fresh start can also derail you from a good habit if it's something you've already built in during a regular routine. For example, if you've been watching this channel, maybe two or three videos ago, I was in Seattle. And even though I had been pretty good about exercising regularly up until then, I, I really struggled, y'all. It was really hard to kickstart my exercise routine once I returned home especially after eating and drinking everything I could see in Seattle. So, whoops. I will say that one thing that has helped me maintain good habits even during those vacations and little trips away from home was using that micro routine strategy that I talked about in one of my very first videos. That is, I didn't expect to work out for 30 to 60 minutes a day like I usually do. And I set the bar a little bit lower when I got back from vacation, maybe just working out five minutes in the day before slowly ramping back up to my usual routine. But again, different things work for different people. But of course, I know we did talk about New Year's resolutions and sometimes they get a bad rep, right? Like we always hear this common, you know, goal of going to the gym or exercising and the gyms are packed January, February, March. And then as the year goes on, fewer and fewer people show up more regularly. Um, I think Katie Milkman actually notes that close to 80% of resolutions and, and goal setting during New Year's, um, they don't actually stick. But what I really like about how she flips that statistic is even though 80% may not be able to achieve their goals exactly to the same degree that they're looking for, that still means that there's one in five people that do succeed, 20%, which is still a significant percentage of people that are able to utilize a fresh start to create meaningful and lasting change for the better. And hopefully utilizing some of these tips and insights in this video, you can be more in that 20% as opposed to the other 80%. So overall, as I'm celebrating year 29, I do intend on using this opportunity for a fresh start. Uh, I definitely fell off the rails a little bit toward the end of year 28 with you know, some of my habit building, but I'm looking forward to continuing this YouTube journey as I've been making videos all this year. Uh, and I encourage you to find a fresh start moment that you can utilize as well. Maybe it's next Monday when you enter a new week. Maybe it's, maybe if you're watching this on a Monday, this can represent your fresh start. Maybe it's an upcoming semester when school starts up again. Or if you're like me, maybe it is a birthday and you can plug into that fresh start effect. But cheers, y'all. Thanks so much for watching this video. And as always, I'll see you in the next cut.